back in February and March, we had um, we were doing some work relating to care workers and NHS workers and uh, and mandatory vaccinations. Um, Tim, do you want to explain what happened? It's extraordinary, isn't it, to think that this was earlier this year that um, the government was saying, um, look, if you haven't been vaccinated, you will lose your job um, to people working in care homes and people working in um, in in the NHS as well. And um, we didn't take a position either way on whether you should or shouldn't have a vaccine. What we did take a position on is that people should have the right to choose. People should have the right to follow their conscience on it. And uh, we felt very, very strongly that the government should not be mandating and forcing and, and, you know, on pain of losing your job, losing your whole livelihood, um, you must take this vaccine. If in conscience, and some people have very good conscience reasons for not taking um, these COVID vaccines, and there are all sorts of questions being raised now about them over time. Um, and you know, but here we are, and people were, were um, threatened with losing their jobs over taking the vaccines. And we helped um, several clients about this and, and took up. That, um, it was actually, it wasn't even just several, Tim. It was tens and tens of clients. Tens right. and tens of, of, Dozens. of yeah. Okay. Um, Dozens of um, clients. And the great thing is, in the end, the government backed down and said, no, we're, you know, we're not going to force you all to lose your jobs. I think they realised they were going, you know, there's a shortage of workers anyway. They're going to only exacerbate the shortage of workers by sacking everyone just for not taking this vaccine, which actually doesn't prevent transmission and doesn't prevent you guessing it. It's not a vaccine in the ordinary sense of the word. Um, so that was a there was a win, although sadly some people did end up losing their jobs anyway um, as a result of that. But um, that was a big win. The government backed down and it was a win for freedom of conscience for Christians and others. And can I say on that one, Tim, as well, I want to talk about the people. Hmm. The people who were exercising their conscience, they were beautiful people. Many of them, you know, as you say, with good reason, and they were on the front line wanting to carry on, do their duty, working in care homes, did it working in, 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 mm. uh, been work, took, at, had perhaps had the, had COVID, were immune, were taking, to, it was the, the care of these people um, and the pressure that they were being put under. But this yeah. violation of conscience that is a really important principle um, that it's vital That's to... That's right, some of them already had COVID, haven't they, and, and could prove that they had um, had the immunity in their system and stuff. You know, yeah, so why have a vaccine then? Uh, yeah, I agree, yeah. So, um, you know, lots, so much of what we did there was unseen, um, and yet uh, we are very thankful to God for uh, enabling us in all of that work um, and eventually with the government's change of, uh, of mind over that. Can we I say keep... more? I know we have to keep moving because we, we can't just stay, we can't, I don't know what time we're at, but we go, we'll be here until midnight if we go this, if we, uh, imagine if we were going through every week, if we take this long on every month. But I want to say there, look at the really important principles, which is what Christian Concern is always about. There's always a big principle behind our cases. It's always a Jesus principle, a Christian principle, which is a conscience principle, which is a freedom to proclaim faith, a freedom not to be compelled by the government to do something that is contrary to your conscience, in violation of your conscience, a freedom to proclaim Christ. And, and when conscience um, gets violated, when the government says you cannot or you will be, in, in order to work, you will be mandated to believe. You will be mandated to do this to your body. You will be mandated to say, when the when these principles come in, when the government can mandate health principles or what is good or bad for you, mm -hmm. if those are not challenged at the point at which they are being exercised or overridden by the government, if they're not challenged early and at that point, we will get much further down the track, as we've seen on many other issues. Yeah. But we'll get much further down the track and it becomes very dangerous. That's why this win is so important because it's actually what it's what we don't know it prevented. Totally. And and you know, you've got this situation of uh, essentially the government saying, Well, your rights, they are qualified, you don't you you don't have your human rights to the extent uh, that they override public health and safety, etc. So it's exactly the same as what we had with COVID lockdowns and churches saying, you know, well, actually, public health is more important than your freedom to worship. So we're going to stop that. And it's exactly what's being argued with conversion therapy bans and other things where it's... Imagine uh, that, exactly. And, and, and abortion buffer zones too. Exactly. So there's always, all of our freedoms are overridden by public health and safety. And um, Yes. And 
You cannot go to an abortion clinic. You cannot stand outside there in order to save the mother and baby, in order to save the baby. You cannot because that um, the, the, the government mandates you not to go there when act your motive is to save the life of the child. And also our motive is to love the mother, to love the woman. And this is, I mean, an extraordinary violation of freedom that the government is imposing similarly on the conversion therapy. It's all big, one big line. You cannot change. If, if a pastor, if a counselor says you can change from sexual behavior, um, or you can change from being same sex attracted, that is toxic. That is bad for your health. That is forbidden. Well, that again is a overreach by the government. It's a direct attack on the gospel. And that's why we stand. All of these things are meshed. And I think sometimes in our work, Paul, when we work so fast, day in, day out, week in, week out, hour by hour, the big picture principle mm. of what it's all about. I think a lot of what a lot of people see and what a lot of Christians even see is always another case. And so we get into the detail of a case of uh, a nurse fire for praying, a street preacher arrested, when actually it's all about keeping the nation open for the good of the gospel, keeping yeah. Jesus Christ famous at the heart of our society, making him known at the heart of us, our society, jingling a very loud bell, um, <laughs> to say he rules, he reigns, it's Christmas time, and there's a reason for the season. 